You only had a few diseases to add to the list in this section, so put your notes away and let's see if you have them down already. If a patient presents with petechia, sepsis, and disseminated intravascular coagulation. Well, it's not the disease in the name of the species, so that gets rid of about 50% of the options. Waterhouse Friedrichsen is a severe adrenal insufficiency due to hemorrhage. This can lead to systemic infection and the presentation seen here. Next, tachycardia, stiff back, and light sensitivity. Notice that we changed some of the common presenting terms around, using stiff back instead of nuclear rigidity, for instance. Test writers love to change things up so students don't simply remember key buzzwords. Here, there are not many options, so it's pretty easy to have meningitis on the mind. But with a several paragraph long vignette, it may not be so clear on exams. What really separates out this meningitis presentation from others is that a rash may also appear. This combination is nearly pathognomonic for N. meningitidis. Test questions also won't use the term gonorrhea. You'll have to know the specific signs and symptoms. For instance, when a patient displays yellowish green discharge and dysuria, this is the urethritis or the inflamed urethra. This is also why some STDs hurt during urination. With a fever, red swollen joints, and pain on movement, think of gonococcal arthritis or septic arthritis. It may also hurt in one joint early on, then move to another joint on a different day. With pelvic pain and a normal ultrasound and liver abscesses, this is Fitzhugh Curtis. The right upper quadrant pain is generally seen in liver and gallbladder disease, hinting to a pathology in this anatomic region. An ultrasound will be normal in about half of the patients, but really, unless you're going into infectious disease, you may never encounter this clinically. How about a newborn with purulent eye discharge? It should make you think of gonorrhea. Ophthalmia neonatorum is a neonatal conjunctivitis that can occur in newborns usually between days two and seven of life. Luckily, newborns are usually prophylaxed with antibiotic eye drops at birth to prevent harmful consequences of this, such as blindness. Although gonococcal ophthalmologia is also seen in adults, eye complications of this bacteria are much more common in newborns. Again, this was another quick section, so please review all the material that you've seen so far. In the next video, we'll cover the features of the Neisseria species.